the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. I, this is deep today. I really, I'm telling you, they deep every day, really, right? Every Sunday, right? But this is deep. This one is probably the most important message that was ever discussed uh, that we went over today, or I went over today. And I wanted to share with you, and I, I just want to encourage you to listen to these studies this week um, because it matters to you personally concerning the direction you should take in life, concerning the Word of God. And the direction should always be toward Christ, toward Yeshua, toward Jesus. You know, the scripture says in John 14, 6, Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that means you don't go by the color of your skin. You don't go by your political affiliation. You don't go by your nationality. You don't go by what country you're in. You don't go by the country where you came from. You go by Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. But if you can keep that in mind, you can make a big difference. So we're going to go and talk about the study real quick. This is the introduction. And, and one of the things I want to do is make sure you know this is what we talked about today. This is a good question, too. It's like the fact is, and, and I like it, and I think it makes sense. It's a question. And I'm going to answer the question at the same time. Do Christians believe we are not accountable to God, but to man? And the scripture I'm using is Romans 14, 12, Jeremiah 17, 10, and Galatians 1, 6 through 10. I'm going to focus on the foundation scriptures in Romans 14, 6 through 12 that I'm going to talk about. But the point is this. Do Christians, because that's why that's what I am. I'm a believer in Christ, Christ Jesus. He's my Lord and personal Savior. So I'm asking a question as a fellow Christian to other Christians, right? I'm gonna answer the question in a second. But what I'm saying is, do Christians believe we are not accountable to God but to man? The answer is that we are accountable to God, not to man. And but your actions must line up with that statement, right? Because what people see. And let me get this up. Come off the screen right here. What people see is in most cases, it seems like people move based on the will or preference of your fellow man. You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a believer in Christ. But you do the thing that is, you do contrary to the word of God. And therefore, you act like you're not accountable to God. Now make sure you get this, this foundational script I was using is in Romans, like I was telling you earlier, in Romans 7. And I want to make sure we cover those real quick. In Romans 7, it says, let me make sure I get it up there for you. I know I got to talk too long. Romans 14, side is 7 to 12. For none of us live unto himself. And no man dies to himself. For whether we live, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. For why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I say it again. Every one of us should give an account of himself to God. That preacher, that minister should give an account of himself to God. And if he's sitting there endorsing you to do bad things, you know, I have one of my friends sit there and say, 
I want to be able to talk about and preach about all kinds of things. And then I, some of the things, I don't want the, the system to discriminate me and tell me I can't preach about the Bible. You know, the, if you're teaching, if you're a Christian, you're teaching about preaching the good news. And people should walk out being able to go preach the good news. If people walk out and sit there and go and beat somebody up because of this exploitation or something else, if people go out there and go and list people because of the color of skin, you didn't preach the good news. Because that, you obviously didn't preach the good news. You didn't preach that they were supposed to love one another. You preached that they were supposed to be the wrath of God. That's not God. That's not the will of God. We should not be going around crucifying anybody. We should not be beating up anybody. We should be loving everybody. And if you feel that that's not justified, but you feel that the preaching the gospel is not enough, then you go ahead and be something else, but you're not preaching the gospel. And the Bible says if you preach any other gospel, you are a curse. You think about that. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to encourage other people to come to Christ. We're supposed to sit there and say that come as you are because the only person who can clean you is Him. We're supposed to sit there and say the only way I can be holy is through Him. The only way I can be righteous is through Him. Remember that. That's what we're talking about today. So I hope you enjoyed this study. I hope you learned the session coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share what you learned to somebody else. Cause that's really what matters. You can subscribe all you want, leave a comment all you want. I don't care, I wanna hear what scripture, but I want you, if you're gonna comment, comment based on the scriptures. Because that's what matters. But the bottom line is this, we all are giving account to God. So I hope you enjoyed the session coming up. Well, I'm going to break them down into A, B, C, D, whatever the cup takes. And then I'm going to go ahead and send these out daily. But I want you to remember that Yeshua is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord in your life. And do His will. That's all that matters. Enjoy the session. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll go forward. First of all, I always like doing the Lord's Prayer because it, it lines up with everything else we do, right? The fact is, in Matthew 6, 5 and verse 9, it says, After this man, therefore, pray ye. God, Christ is saying in this manner, approach your prayers in this manner, which is that you come to the Father. God is the, your Father, if you choose Him to be your Father. And once again, the tree is known by its fruit. But anyway, our Father, which I have, and hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, meaning His kingdom, His system, not the political party system, platforms, or government system, <laughs> but his kingdom. We operate in the kingdom of God. Then I guarantee you, most again, once again, for all of you, you are not considered the wrath or the instrument of the wrath of God. You're not called to be. He, Christ gave you a very clear challenge or commission, which is go preach the good news. Not preach how you kill people and put other people down, but how you preach the good news of Christ. You teach Christ. You point the way toward Christ, not toward other people. Thy will be done. His will is his word. If you don't know his word, then read it. So you could do his will. So when somebody sit there and tell you is go ahead and go hang Mike Pence or or lynch these black people or lynch these Hispanic people or whatever you want to call it. You know that the scripture says, Christ said, I, I, I do what my father tells me to do. So then unless you find that you're supposed to be called to be a militaristic person or a condemning person or a mean person and, and, and all those things like that, you, you're not going to find that in the teaching of Christ. You know you're not. I know it makes you feel good in the flesh, but it's not going to matter when it comes to the things of God. And I know some of you nappy-head people <laughs> going to sit there and say, oh man, I could do, I, I, I got the right to confront people. You ain't got the right to kill people. You ain't got, to, you got, you are called to love people. And you may want to give them tough love. But if, if, if especially, you know, think about it, you don't give tough love to somebody that's not a believer for once. One thing. And you do not tell somebody they can't come into the body of Christ. You are not the gatekeeper. And many of us have put up the, put up the whole armor of God toward people coming into the kingdom of God. And that's not what you call to do. You call it again. You put a whole armor for you. <laughs> the fire docks the story. You 
And you need that whole armor for you. You don't need that sword to hurt people, huh? which is the word of God, which is what people have done. That what religion has done. That's what people call religion that suddenly controls people because they're trying to exert the will of God over people. That's what religion does. They assert the authority and then they execute and impose things on people. That's why you had the sale of your child. That's why you had the crusade. That's why you even had the slave trade and everything else because somebody said that that's the will of God. And that's not the will of God. And that's how we turn people off. So, verse 10, thy kingdom come, which means his system, thy will be done, meaning the word of God, in earth as it is in heaven. See, now, if you do the Lord's prayer every day, you realize that God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven, not your will, all right? Give us this day, meaning this is a daily thing, the word of God. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Daily, we're supposed to study the word of God ourselves. Read the word of God yourself. And I know sometimes, I, what I've done is I incorporated a chapter a day into my prayer. It's part of the prayer part. I sit there and, I, and if I miss if I miss a, read a, a chapter in the New Testament in the morning, I'll read that chapter uh, in the evening when I go to bed. I'll read an Old Testament scripture when I go to bed, right? So if I pattern of part of my prayer is to read the word of God daily and just pray. Matter of fact, it's very good, isn't it? Read the word of God, read a chapter, and then go into your prayer and reflect on what you read. But if you do that part of your prayer system, you will read the Bible over and over again. It's not about saying you read the Bible completely. It's about you read the Bible and continue to read the Bible. Because faith comes back here and here in the word of God. And forgive us of our debt, as, I, as we forgive our debt towards. That scripture is telling you is how you forgive others is how you will be forgiven. <laughs> if you don't get that, you, you need to get it. You will be given the way you give up, forgive others. If you don't forgive others, then you're not going to be forgiven. And I'm showing that in the scripture. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Meaning, why, can you, why would you think God wants you to be evil or be an evil instrument? to do bad things to people when God you're asking God to deliver you from evil but yet you want to be evil I'm telling you it does not work the dog is not going to hunt you are supposed to uh, be and ask God lead me not into temptation but you're asking God to deliver you from evil you don't be evil because you know you ask yourself if you are acting evil you basically saying and saying uh, Deliver me from myself <laughs> because you're an evil person. And you got to understand how people look at you. But thine is the kingdom. Once again, his kingdom, his system goes. So it's the kingdom of God that we operate in. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That is the man of how you pray. And look at 14. It says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Listen to that. Look at the conjunction to it. If you forgive men their trespass, if you forgive men because they're black, if you forgive men because they're white, if you forgive men because of whatever they are, you doing the will of the Father. I said forget, but with some things, discrimination, you do need to forget because it doesn't make sense. But if somebody does something to you, he said is forgive them. And you don't have to keep doing what they tell you to do over and over again. You don't have to keep associating with them, but you do forgive them. Because 15 said, for if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That is a spiritual law. That is a spiritual principle. And if you want to be a Christian, now if you're not a Christian, you're not, you're not have to just this prayer. You're not have to do the belief in Christ or deliverance. You're not. But you're still going to be held accountable. God will hold you accountable to you. You and him. You will be held accountable to God. Be God is whether you're a Christian or not. And if a believers, when you sit there and try to not let somebody be saved, not let somebody come into the will of God, it says right here in 1 Timothy 2, 4, who would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth? 
God wants them all to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. If you operate in lies, that means you're not given the knowledge of truth. <laughs> if you say it's contrary to the word of God, you're not given the full knowledge of truth. You are the lying and you are deceiving people and you need to repent because the Bible said that his will is for people to come to the full knowledge of truth. Not something that you're forced, but because they're given a choice. That's what he always says. Romans 14, 12, which is going to base into the topic I'm talking about. So that every one of us shall give, a, give an account of himself to God. You can go ahead and talk to some preacher and tell, and he's going to tell you, no, you're not held accountable to God. Yes, you are. And he is too. And we are too. We all are held accountable to God, whether you are a believer or not. Now, those that they don't want to, you can sit there, you can believe that you're not. You can believe that God doesn't exist. That's just your choice. But you're still going to be held accountable for it. Because what you believe, what you think, and what, since you weren't here in the beginning of the creation of God, the creation of this world, whatever you do, whatever I do, I will give an account to God. That's why I need Christ, because boy, if I had to give my, my if the blood of Christ couldn't cover, did not cover my transgressions, my account of myself shall equal something that I don't want as a reward. But I need to choose Christ to be able to, to, to be my advocate, to pay the price of the transgressions and transgressions I did and transgressions I may do. And not to, and to my point, in my, por my part, people, and you, is not to do and practice those things that's contrary to the will of God toward your fellow man. That's the biggest piece I want to sit there saying. A lot of us sit there, we can condemn ourselves about things that we think and what we feel. But it's not so much of that, it's more so much of what you do to your fellow man. If you don't, if you don't, you got to get that. And what you do to your fellow man is what matters. You know, that's what matters. What do your fellow man? Now, let's go into the scripture. Romans 14, 7. For none of us live unto himself, nor to your political party, nor to anything else, but you know, none of us live unto himself, and no man dies to himself. You died for something, right? For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Listen to it. Did you did you hear the scripture coming out of my mouth? You, whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. You, we're not dying to a political party. We're not dying to the color of our skin. We're not dying to anything else to but to God. What do we live there for? Die, we are the Lord's. That's a possession. If you are a believer. Now, like I said, those of you who call yourself a Christian but don't do the things of Christ, the Bible says the Lord knows who are his. That's what the scripture says. And you know that if you're not doing his will, you know you're not trying to line up with his way. I ain't talking about the fact that you come into the body of Christ, you got issues. We all got issues. And I'm going to tell you something, that you're going to have issues for the rest of your life. But if you, I'm saying is that that's where the biggest laws that applies is what you do to your fellow man. It's a lot of things you do to yourself that you got to work on, but you do to your fellow man, that is something, no question about it. You will give an account to God. So when you want to sit there and hurt people, abuse people, do bad things to people, you will give an account of yourself to God. Amen? Look at this. For this thing, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why does thou judge thy brother? Meaning, so that everything you think about is all point to what you do towards your fellow man. If you do what, you know, it, it better, it's better to focus on you and what you need to do to yourself. But what you do to others was what you will definitely be held accountable for. Now, some nappy head preacher will sit there and say, oh, he tell you, you're going to be, you can do things to yourself and you're not going to be held accountable. You know what you do to yourself. You know you have more control of what you do yourself. Therefore, you need to work on yourself. Yes, you got to work on yourself. 
You will be held accountable what you do yourself, but most you will definitely be held accountable what you do to your fellow man. And that is what preachers and everything else need to make sure. How you treat your fellow man is, I mean, which is your neighbor. Christ talked about that in the Good Samaritan, right? What you do to your fellow man is what God is concerned with. And that's why even the Lord, if you look at the Ten Commandments, and we're going to go through those today, is the fact is that is thou shall not kill. What? Kill. You ain't talking about killing yourself. You shouldn't kill yourself either. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, run, don't run out the street. Don't kill yourself. But don't definitely don't. Look, it's God, that's those scriptures about your neighbor, what you do to somebody else. You don't do that. You don't kill. You don't kill yourself either, but you don't definitely don't kill somebody else. You don't see. I'm, I'm sitting there talking about the fact of what you do to your fellow man. Because that's what a lot of religion try to do is try to control you and do things to your fellow man. Because they want you to do what they think you should do, and therefore, if they if you don't do what they want you to do, history has shown that people sit there and try to kill their fellow man because they're not doing what you believe they should do, or even they're not doing the will of God. You're not, they're not, you're not, they're not held accountable to you. They're held accountable to God, just like you're held accountable to God. So you can't sit there and violate the, the laws and the will of God toward your fellow man because you're trying to say, well, I'm trying to make them do the will of God. You can't make nobody do nothing. So stop doing that. That's why verse 10 said, but why does thou judge thy brother and execute the law against thy brother? But why does thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Stop being religious, tries to be the judge, sitting in the judge in this lifetime, and you are not the judge, not of the things of God, not of the will of God. You may be a judge, some of you are appointed to be judges for the government body that you're associated with, for the constitution if you're part of this country. But the fact is that you're not judge of the things of God toward your fellow man, nor are you the executioner. And best, worst part is you're not the executioner to those things that are contrary to the will of God, because God did not call you to do that. You are supposed to do the will of God, preach the gospel, love one another, not be the law enforcement toward your fellow man based on spiritual principles. You can be in a law enforcement if you decide to be one for the laws and ordinance of man. That's what you're hired to do. And we as believers are supposed to follow the laws of the ordinance of the government that you're associated with. If you don't want to do that, that's then you will face the consequences of it. You will be held accountable for violating ordinances of man. But you must understand that you will also be held accountable for the ordinance of God. And if you do the ordinance of God, then you will follow the ordinance of man unless those ordinances violate the will of God. But you are not supposed to be the law enforcers of the ordinance of God, which is what religion tried to call itself to do. It says, verse 11, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, to God. So the 12 says, so then every one of us should give an account of ourselves to God. Stop listening to religious people. Stop trying to feel that you're supposed to be accountable to religious people or to your, to your ministry, to your political party. You are accountable to God. And if you do the will of God, then you won't violate the, the ordinance of man. And I ain't talking. See, now if you have an order that's going against the will of God, now you, now you have something to stand for or stand against. But you are not supposed to be the wrath of God. But that's what religion has done. And I'm telling you, you, you need to get out of that business. 
If somebody's doing something, you pray for them. If they're violating the law, then you report them. I mean, I told you, they violate ordinances of the government, local, federal, whatever. You report that violation because you let the authorities deal with it because you're not the law enforcement. And so we've done that. So did you, you so you got that scripture. Because we're going to go through it quickly because, uh, uh, like I said, all kind of technical issues happen today. So bottom line is we want to go ahead and get these scriptures, meditate on them. Maybe we'll come again next week. But let's make sure we get understanding you're not accountable to man, but you're accountable to God. You are accountable. Let's get this in our head. We are accountable to God, not to man. Got to do that. That's what this scripture says. That's what's written. So, so when your pastor try to tell you what to do, you need to sit and say, if it lines up with the will of God, I'll do it. But only because it lines up with the will of God, not because of you. And I'm not going to be held accountable to you. I'm going to be held accountable to God. That's why you get out of this business. That's why we get out of that business of religion being designed to control people. If we sit there and recognize that you're not supposed to be accountable to people, you're accountable to God. So the study today is the fact is that we all give an account of ourselves to God. And so leave this one thing in my doubts. What would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? Think that way as you move through life. Okay? And don't worry about whether people approve of where you are where you are or not. You are a child of God because it's the will of God. Remember we put that in 2 Timothy? He will for all men to be saved and come to the full knowledge of the truth of God. I'm putting things out. I'm talking even longer because I'm trying to make sure you get the word of God. Because it's the word of God that matters, not me. But I'm guaranteeing you if some preacher or some Christian Sit there and say, you are accountable to me. Now, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to assess what you believe or not. You need to sit there and say, you, I'm not accountable to you, so I don't matter whether you believe I'm a Christian or not. I don't need you to sit there and try to tell me that I'm, I can make an assess myself. I'm not even going to make an assess myself. I'm going to sit there and say, I'm a child of God because of him. And I'm trying to do his will. And you sit there and come tell me with some small thin layer, one thin slice of Christianity, and to hold me accountable because I'm not going to be accountable to you. I'm accountable to God. Stop letting people sit there and run people off away from the church because you they didn't you didn't meet their criteria. Do you need to meet their criteria? You need to meet God's criteria. You remember Christ said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners to repentance. So he's seeking you. He's seeking me. Those people sit there act like they never sin. Those people act like they don't sin. You need to sit there and say, get behind me, Satan. You're mindful of the things of man and of the things of God. And don't sit there and tell me you want to give me one piece of God's will and hold me accountable for it. You don't hold the rest of the stuff in life that you're accountable for. Get a life. You pray for me. You have mercy for me. You don't sit there and condemn me because you have not the authority to do so. You should encourage me to do right, but you don't sit there and try to tell me that I'm supposed to think the way you think. Doing that, running so many people away from Christ, running so many people from church. So you got some people sitting there saying, how can you be a Democrat if you're a Christian? How can you be a Christian if you're a Republican? Get a life. You can be a Christian. You call yourself a Christian. You can be a failure of any party you want. The question is, as long as you say that, his will is above their will, their platform, your platform, your will. I am not being held accountable because of you. I will take those issues, those platforms, those things to God. And on top of this, and I'm going to go over this, I am not an instrument of God. I'm not a judge. I don't judge people whether they can go to heaven or hell. I don't judge that. I'm just telling you, you need to be accountable to God. And if you feel comfortable with what you're doing, you keep doing what you're doing with your bad self. But I know that I'm accountable to God. And you need to make sure you do that. When you confront people, they confront you. You say, pray for me. There's some things I got to work on. But I hope you're praying for yourself as well. 
And I hope you line up with his will as well. Because you know what? You come in where you want to, but you can give account to God. And one of the things you got to worry about is if you sit there and condemn me, if you sit there and come against me, and especially you're trying to use physical force against me, you're going to be accountable to God. Do what you do. You call what you want to call it. Amen. Man, I, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and reflect on these scriptures again. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put these videos out. And I, and, I, and I hope that we all just study show ourselves approved and just recognize we're accountable to God. What would Yeshua do when you make decisions? Now, if you line up with that, I think you're going to make some right decisions. I'm going to make perfect because no one's perfect. I ain't perfect. And I ain't said I am perfect. But I know what? I know nobody out there. I know. You know. None of them are perfect. None of them are holy. But they can be holy in Christ. You can't be holy outside of Christ. You can't be holy outside of your own preference. Your own righteousness. You're not going to be holy. You don't give you holy because of him. You're going to be righteous because of him. That's what the scriptures say. Okay? All right. God bless you. Hope you have a great week. And I'll see you when I see you. I'm going to go ahead and do my introduction uh, for these tapes. You know, I break them down into segments, right? I break them down to from A, B, and C, try to do 20 to 30 minutes, you know, mostly, uh, <laughs> to the best of my ability. And and then I sit them and put those out, hopefully on a daily basis. I send out texts. I send them like, a, like today, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But the uh, YouTube and... Uh, Facebook and Twitter, they get it every day. You know, hey, you gotta reach people the best way you can, right? It's about the word of God. Preach the gospel. That's what we call us to do. So I'm gonna preach it. I'm gonna teach it. I'm gonna discuss it. And I hope you do the same. Learn what you learn. Throw out what's not important, but don't throw out the will of God. And share, man. We need to we we let's share the scriptures, all right? And don't forget to subscribe. Amen. All right, God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, do my introduction for my videotapes uh, from this session today. All right, stay blessed. Bye bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.